What's up, guys? Eric McLean here. It is crazy to think that we are almost done with this ACC prospect series that we've been doing. NFL guys that are moving on to the next level. Uh, we've had some awesome interviews, some great content, and man, it's been so fun just chatting with these guys as they go through the process and they go through what is next to get to this next level. We're wrapping up with two teams this week, Clemson and NC State. And if you live under a rock, two teams that made an unbelievable run in this NCAA tournament in basketball. Man, it's been so fun to watch them. Uh, and, and what an incredible journey. And one team in particular with NC State going five straight days, winning the ACC tournament and then making the run, making the noise, uh, and just absolutely the Cinderella. I know it's like a, a disrespectful thing to say, but it's fun. And it's cool. And when you're a double-digit seed, especially, it's okay to be that. Uh, and the things that they were able to do. Big DJ Burns, my gosh. If, if, you know, whenever basketball is done, maybe we slide him over to the gridiron, get him over at left tackle. Those sweet feet I know could do some work over there. Uh, but one guy that I know NC State fans absolutely love and, and, and are going to miss, I'm going to miss, uh, is our guy here on the show today, Peyton Wilson the best defender in college football this past year. I mean, every award, I think he missed one that he should have gotten, uh, which was unbelievable that he missed that one. But a guy that just flies around, uh, plays with his hair on fire. You talk about passion. You talk about love for the game, the definition of it. When you look it up, his picture sitting right there, uh, Mr. Wilson. It's been so fun to cover him. I've really enjoyed on ACC Network, on this podcast here, Graham looking Mac Lane. He, he has been such a joy to cover. Um, and, and we break it all down, talk about a lot of different things uh, with Peyton here. You guys are going to love it. We'll have a little bit more analysis on the back end, but quickly before we get to uh, Peyton Wilson here, a message from our friends over at Ingles. If you guys haven't seen, we've been chefing it up. We've been going to Ingles. We've been making it happen throughout this entire NCAA tournament run. Show, show us some videos. If you're in the comments, you know, tell us what you've been cooking it up, but also tag us in social media. We always love seeing that stuff and seeing what you guys have going on, the creations uh, that, that we've made over here. I know Kelly got after it with some dips. Uh, she talked about going from three-point shots to making some some different dips and cheese dip and things of that nature. So we try to have a lot of fun, and Ingles is such a great partner for us. They've got all your needs, guys. So if you're in the area, you got an Ingles nearby, check them out. Uh, they, they absolutely do numbers and are so strong in their community too, which is a big, big plus for us and something that we feel very passionate about. So real quick, message from Ingles. Then we'll talk to Peyton Wilson. Did you know that Ingles sells more organics than any other store? Or that they run their own dairy? Or that they only serve USDA choice and prime meat? Did you know that they have more local craft beer than any place else? Or that they have energy smart stores? Or that they professionally slice and package imported cheese from Europe? Did you know about their giant international aisle, local farm partnerships, curbside pickup, wine department? Or that they donate 3,956 meals a day to local food banks? Well, now you do. It's all in the bag. Ingles, low prices, love the same. Peyton Wilson, man, I've been jacked up for this episode. I've been really excited, waiting on it to talk with you, man. You, you've been one of my absolute favorites. I know you know that to, to cover in this conference in the ACC. And just every time we get to talk to you, man, uh, just your passion for football is is amazing. So I, I, I want to start there. Uh, welcome to the show. But, you know, why is football just so important to you? Why, why do you love it so much? The things you went through in your career uh, to now be on the brink of the ultimate goal. Yeah, well, I mean, first and foremost, you know, where I'm at in my life and, you know, how strong a relationship I have with Christ now, um, you know, I firmly believe that, you know, he's given me these talents and one of the best ways that I can honor him is to, you know, take it as far as I can and, you know, play every single game, every single rep like it's my last. And, you know, that's one of the main reasons. And the second reason is I truly just love the sport. You know, I love everything about it. I love the physicality mostly. Um, you know, I love... <laughs> I love it sounds a little crazy, but, you know, what the dopamine that kind of releases in my brain when I hit somebody or, you know, when I'm able to just meet someone in a hole and figure out who the better man is. It's just I mean, you don't get a feeling like that anywhere else unless you're on a football field. And, you know, I've been playing football since I was six and I've always played the same way, just, you know, with my hair on fire. And, you know, that's never going to change. Yeah. And it's so evident, man, I think is, you know, obviously state fans know for a long time, ACC fans have known for a long time, but. You know, now the rest of the country and, and the NFL world is is kind of figuring that out and, and looking at, at the way you play and looking at the film and you know all the things that I see on social media that you know we, we tell not to pay attention to, but it matters, right? People's opinion during this specific small window of your life is so important. Uh, right. w w w when you play the game the way that you do and you, you face some 
crazy adversity. You face yeah. some some big time injuries that you know kind of set you back. Um, yeah. How did your relationship with Jesus in, in Christ and your faith really get strengthened and come stronger? You know, throughout times that maybe could have just destroyed you. To be quite frank. Yeah, well, I think you know I have to credit my parents a lot. I have I have amazing parents, um, super religious parents, and um, you know through the injuries that I've had, I've had a few, and you know the only one that I've ever truly had to miss time for was that 2021 season, and that kind of put a damper on me. And you know I definitely had um, what my mom likes to call the victim's mentality of you know I was just why me, you know like I feel like I was doing everything right, and here I am again. But you know my parents kind of just. You know, they continued to remind me that, you know, God's plan is always greater than us. Um, yeah. You know, whatever plan we have for ourselves is probably not the plan that he has in store for us. And, you know, just looking back on it, like, you know, just leaning on him and, you know, what he put me through. Like in 2021, I was not as close to a player that I was now and also not as close to a person. Um, my relationship wasn't as strong as it is now. And, you know, just everything that he has put me through is just, you know, turned me into a better player, a better person and just continued to you know, grow my relationship with him and, you know, kind of just understanding that whatever plan he has for me, no matter what it is that, you know, that's, that's what I'm going to run with and I'm going to hit it head on however he wants me to do it. So. I love that, man. It's powerful. And and it's interesting too, how, you know, he, he just uses different things for us, right? Like we, we just no clue. Uh, and, yeah. and, but he's, he's like the, the clayer, man, he's going to make it into this beautiful, you know, art form, your darkest days, probably, you know, at this point, uh, man, he's shined a light on that and, you know, has turned you into this, this amazing warrior, which I love. And, and it's incredible to hear that. Uh, let, let's jump into your play a little bit more here, because like you said, playing with your hair on fire, uh, I, I do want to reflect back for, for some of our listeners here. Um, I think it was, I think it was maybe 19, 18 and coach Doran's telling us, Hey, we got this young guy coming in number 11. He's going to be the one of the best to ever do it. And we're just like, really? You know, how do, how do you know? Uh, and, and he just raved about your tenacity and your ability and, you know, what he thought that you could be. And then you did it and you turned into that. And, and honestly, one of the best to ever wear the, the the Wolfpack uniform there. What was that journey like just from, from a, I mean, there was expectation, obviously. And then for you to meet it and to cap it off this season as being, you know, the best defender in college football. Uh, what What was that journey like? Yeah, I mean, it was it was special, um, you know, doing all of this 45 minutes from home, uh, you know, being able to have my parents there with me every step of the way because they're so close. And then, you know, it, it was really cool for me. Um, I always tell people this and it kind of sounds a little cheesy, but like whatever expectations people have for me, like they're not as close to the expectations that I have for myself. Like going back to even 2020 when I was, you know, I was. 19 years old and I was first team all ACC like I still thought I wasn't doing enough and then you know last year I definitely didn't think I played the way I should have and even this year like yeah I had an amazing season but there were plays that I missed and you know there was stuff that I could have done better to help us win those three games that we lost and you know that's just kind of my mentality and you know every single year that I play I want to become such a better player I want to my, I want my football IQ to become so much higher and you know that's just kind of how I'm wired um I honestly don't think that to this day that I played my best ball and I think that's yet to come. And, you know, I think this upcoming season is going to be really special for me and, you know, whatever team that I'm on, I think, I think just the work that I put in and, you know, the people that I've surrounded myself with the support system that I have, it's, it's going to be special years to come. So. Yeah. yeah I, I, I'm right there with you. And I think, you know, all that has been on display uh, when, when you talk about, you know, being better and, and again, you're the mountaintop, like it's best all American, all the awards you, you did it. Um, you know, what does that look like? I mean, what, what does honestly getting better at this point look like for you as you are about to enter, you know, the NFL and, and, and it's the best of the best? Yeah. I mean, like you just said, I'm about to be playing literally the best in the world. So whatever I did in college, I mean, it means nothing. Like it's going back and it's going back to being a freshman in college again. Um, I think for me, you know, it's just pro style offenses are so different. You know, when's the last time you've seen a a college quarterback under the center, especially in the ACC. You know, there's a lot of a lot of 12 personnel. There's no 10 personnel. There's no unbalance. So just just continuing to, you know, get my football IQ to where it needs. And then, you know, also, like, I'm super, like, what some people might not be excited for, like, I'm super excited to get in a room with a vet, you know, just kind of kind of mock him and learn from him. Just, you know, I mean, like, whatever team I go with, I'm going to try to find the most experienced linebacker in that room, and I'm trying to mimic everything that they do, their schedule, their work routine, how they watch film. I mean, those are the things that I'm excited for, just to continue to learn. 
Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, like, I'm going to be playing against the best in the world. And, you know, what I put on display this last year probably isn't going to cut it. So just continuing to improve every aspect of my game, whether it's in run fits, whether it's in coverage, and, you know, just continuing to fly around. I love that mindset, man. I think that's it's powerful to come in with that, you know, because a lot of guys might be a little overconfident and then kind of get hit right in the face and, and don't know what to do. But, you know, for yeah. you to, to understand all that, to say all that, I, I think that's I think that's powerful and will help you grow faster and, and to be acclimated faster, you know, kind of with it. How about, how about your game from your perspective? Because, I mean, you can look back at the past four years and hear what I've said and what others have said and, you know, what we think is is the best. But, you know, for you, when, when you're playing and when you watch the film and, you know, you see Peyton Wilson out there doing his thing, what separates you as a linebacker and, and – you know, maybe that, quite frankly, some people are, are sleeping on at this point that you think at the next level really can help you separate you. Yeah, well, I mean, I think everyone first and foremost sees the speed. Um, like, I truly think, like, if you have your – if the ball carrier is running away from me, like, I'm going to go get him down no matter who that is. Um, you know, I think – I truly think my motor is higher than anyone's. Like, I'm I'm really – football is only four quarters, but if it was eight quarters, I promise I'd still be going. Um <laughs> I think I have the highest motor, one of the highest motors that you can play with. And then also just, you know, the football IQ that I do have. Like this past year, I think my game elevated so much just because 60 to 70 percent of the time I knew exactly what was coming, you know. And I think people don't know that unless you're in the room with someone, um, if you're studying film with someone. And I think that, you know, I think the brain that I play with matched with the talent that I do have is, you know, it's, it's a good combination. Um, I, people already know this, but, you know, kind of try to model my game after Luke Kuechly, you know, one of yeah. who I think is the best linebacker to ever play the game. Uh, obviously didn't have the longevity due to injuries, but, you know, super athletic, super freaky. But I think if you take all of that away, he still is one of the best to ever do it just because how much he studied, you know, how fearless he was, how hard he played the game. And at the end of the day, like, you couldn't do anything that he didn't know was coming. Mm -hmm. So, you yeah. It, I tell you, to, I've seen that up close and personal playing against him, and it, it, it's almost scary because this guy's sitting there calling out what you're doing, where you're going, and you're just like, yo, man, were you in the huddle? Like, were you with us right there? How, how do you know that? And, I mean, sometimes I'm sure maybe he guesses right, but truly it's what he sees on film, and, and he's able to take that from the film room to the field as you've gotten better, as you've grown up, as you've found different ways, how, do, how does that translate best for you? Like, how do you get all those hours of studying and film that everybody can do, right? It, it, nobody's limited on how much they can go in and watch film. But how do you take that and get it to the field to where you can play so much faster? Yeah, I mean, I definitely have to credit Coach Gibson, um, who I think is the best D coordinator in the nation. Um, he really, he really simplified the game for me. Uh, you know, I think in the past I was trying to see too much. Um, you know, his big thing is if you see a little, you see a lot, you see a lot, you see a little. Um, just, you know, the tendencies and, you know, how well he prepared us for Saturdays. I mean, it was truly amazing. Like, there's some games, like, he would say they're going to run certain plays that we've never seen on film, and they run it just because he's been doing it so long. And just, you know, him putting me in the right positions to make plays. Like, I tell people, I've told you guys this plenty of times like if you don't make those plays you probably shouldn't be at the d1 level just because i mean he's blitzing right into a to a play that's coming or you know he's putting you in the perfect position but i mean a lot of it is you know luckily i was in school for a long time so i had already graduated so these last years i was just taking kind of some fun classes that i that i enjoyed you know staying eligible and just having extra time on my hands to to really to really study to really study film and you know to almost turned into a pro a little earlier, you know, just, yeah. you know, staying after practice and not having to rush off to class, having an online class instead of going, you know, to an in-person class was, you know, just grateful for that to be able to continue and study throughout the day. And then, like I just said, I mean, Coach Gibson is one of a kind. The way he prepares you for Saturday is, I mean, it's unlike any other. I've been around other coaches that can definitely overcomplicate it or, you know, not have you prepared enough. And I think he has a, I think he has a perfect recipe of, you know, here's what you need, don't need too much, but I'm going to give you everything that you do need to go make as many plays as you possibly can. Right, right. And, and I, I think a lot of great things that you just said there um, and, and echo what you say about Coach G. I mean, the thing, the way he sees the game, uh, the way that he prepares it is, it makes sense why you guys have had such great linebackers and, and, and how he can help you kind of take another step. And you know, what you just said there, too, about becoming a pro a little bit early, 
I, you know, some guys can get kind of lost in this. Some guys thrive in this, but you know, football is all you got now. There is no school. There is no this and that kind of pulling you. This is your job, and and everything you just said makes me believe that you know you're on the edge. That man, the 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 level that you can take it now with having all of that, with having that extra opportunity, uh, really gets you excited. And and I can't wait yeah. to see it. Let's talk about NC State a little bit here, man, and, and we'll get you out of here. Very grateful for your time. Uh, this season that you guys had was it was almost like three seasons in one. Uh, you know, when when you look at the different things that were happening the expectation uh Brennan's coming in and we're like oh man let's see what happens you know here we go and you know he struggles and and can't really find himself and you know then MJ has to come back in and you guys are winning and you know then he makes a business decision that that he did whether you agree with it or not and uh Brennan has to kind of save the day and the defense saves the day you know throughout what what did that say about those men that that were wearing that helmet with you that were a part of that uh to, to to in some really adverse situations, make an unbelievable season. Yeah, I mean, I think what people don't really realize is like, yeah, we finished nine and three, but we started off four and three. Um, right. You know, we, we, I mean, we lost to Louisville 13 to 10. And then I don't know if we had a game in between or not, but then we go to Durham against uh, Duke and we lose 24 to three. And I mean, it was, I mean, for me, it was tough because I mean, I had been, I had been around some great teams at NC State and we competed and we played our hearts out. And, you know, at the beginning of the season, that just wasn't the case. I mean, we had guys that were trying. Um, we had a few guys that were playing tough, but I don't think that we were playing what our what, what we preached, right? I think at NC State, like, if you think about NC State, you're from North Carolina, you think tough, you think blue collar, and you think for four quarters, you're going to get a fight, you know? And I don't, I don't think that's what we were given at the beginning of the season. Um, you know, I want to talk about Brennan a little bit. He's an amazing person, obviously had some up and downs, but, you know, definitely credit a lot of the back end of the season to him, the way that he kind of, because when you, when you struggle like that at your last season and then you kind of, I mean, you get benched and a younger guy yeah. comes in, you could, you could almost just chalk it like, hey, I'm done. You know, I'm going to move on with my life. But, you know, he was there. You know, he, I mean, even through all of that, he supported MJ with as, as best as you could, you know, continued to, be the leader that he was when he was playing and you know when he came back in I mean I mean God's a better stel- uh, storyteller than any of us you know just you know, him, him coming back in and playing the way that he did and especially that last game man just you know lighten it up and I mean against one of the better teams in the country against one of the best quarterbacks that I think I've ever played against and you know just the way that he handled himself and then I mean, our defense always does what our defense does. And, you know, after we started four and three, um, just having tough conversations with each other in the locker room, we kind of got back to our identity and just, you know, just got back to playing the NC State football that we always preach. You know, we were we were tough. We were violent. For four quarters, you were going to get our best. And, you know, it took a lot. It took a lot of brotherly love. And, you know, I think that says a lot about the culture that it, uh the NC State has that Coach Dorn, Coach Thunder, all of those guys over there have built. Just, I mean, we go through a lot of adversity. It seems like sometimes at NC State we have a little more than others, which I know isn't true, but we're just kind of living it. Um, but just, you know, just continuing to have that brotherly love, you know, truly playing for the person to your left and your right. And, you know, I've been playing with my best friends, Drake Thomas and Thayer Thomas, for the past four or five years. And then this last year, you know, I think was honestly the funnest season I've ever had. You know, just the guys that I was able to play with, with Caden Fordham, with Devon Betty, with Davin Van, CJ Clark. I mean, just making lifelong friends, just, you know, trying to, trying to, you know, better ourselves, better our position. And, you know, with team success comes individual success. So that's amazing. Man. Great answers, dude. You've been killing this. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. you, you mentioned the UNC game. So I do want to talk about that. And then I'll ask about Coach Doran and, and we'll get you out of here. Uh, we were there. We were at that game, and it, it was just a weird vibe, like early and weird in regards to very good for y'all. Where it, it felt like something crazy was about to happen, and you, you come out, and the defense plays pretty close to perfect. Okay, yeah. where, where you guys are making plays, you're getting turnovers, you're knocking guys out, uh, making all kinds of stuff. What did that game feel like? I mean, because that, that's the ultimate exclamation point, especially being from North Carolina that game at the end and to win the way you guys did. I mean, that it was insane. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I think it just, I think it just speaks volumes of what NC state is, you know, been through a lot the whole season, uh, but just got better each game. You know, I think, 
I think after we lost to Duke, I think every game that you watched us play that we got better. Like we truly did. And, you know, to end it the way we did to send, I mean, it was very important for me to go out the way that I did playing against UNC, beating a crosstown rival for the third year in a row, by the way. But, um, <laughs> but um, you know, just, just also, I mean, for guys like Brennan, you know, to end, to end his career on an all time high, you know, for all the other seniors that walked out on senior night, just to send us off the way that we did was, it was truly special. And, you know, I just, I mean, like I said, it just speaks volumes to what they're building at NC state. And, you know, I think, I think it was truly important for, you know, pretty much the whole city of Raleigh, um, you yeah. know, just to, just to have that one on your back and to, you know, finish it the way you did. And I think, I think the way that we were playing at the end of the season, if we'd have been like that at the beginning, I think the ACC championship would have looked a lot different than it did. But I mean, you can't really, can't really write your own story. That's kind of just how, how it falls sometimes. I uh, don't want to just speak to ghosts here, but you know, I think, I think if we play how we do at the end of the season, at the beginning, uh, there's a whole different story being written right now. But, you know, just the way that we finished is just also helpful for them guys to continue to build. You know, the guys that are still there, whether it's recruiting or just, you know, the momentum that they have going into the season with the talent that they have. So, Yeah, it's it's been an incredible uh, you know, boosting point for them, like you said, with recruiting, with the transfer portal. My, my gosh, the the guys that NC State is bringing in next year, we're excited, right? Like everybody's looking at, okay, is, is this going to be a team that you know gets to that double digit win column? Yeah. And I know that was so important to you guys, and you're know, just capping it off against North Carolina. I, I went and watched them uh, scrimmage. What was it last last Friday? And you oh, know, insider, what we got? I mean, I'm not going to give you too much, but I will say, like in the past. You know, in the past, sometimes, you know, always had a great defense, maybe struggled offensively. Definitely not going to be the case. Come on. Definitely not. Come on. <laughs> I like to hear that. We'll, we'll talk more off cam. We'll talk more off cam. I love that. And uh, yeah. I am excited for him. Last one for you, brother. Uh, Coach Dave Doran is – he's one of the best. And, and, and it's interesting to me how, uh, you know, other fan bases have their opinion and, and this and that, but he loves y'all. And he truly does. And he loves NC State. And and I, I just I love his passion for the game. Every time we get to speak to him, um, it, it bleeds out of him. Uh, and, yeah. and I think that that's that's a guy you want to play for. But it seems like you two have a really special relationship. Just give us a little insight to that and, and what Coach Doran means to you. Yeah, I mean, we've been through a lot together, you know, like obviously uh, when I was younger, uh, got in some trouble. Um, then obviously going through the injuries that I did. And, you know, him just kind of fending for me, um, you know, like you said, he's always had high praise for me and just, you know, him really wanting to see that out for me, you know, the season that I had this year, like, I mean, I think it meant more to him than it did to me just because, you know, I think how important I am to him. And like you just said, like, I think, I think if you don't know Coach Doran, he can come off as very blunt or very serious, like, not like, like not a, not a guy that's going to joke around with you. And while that might be the case, like, he truly loves football and he loves his players. Like when you're in that building, you truly feel that he's a player's coach. Um, like he, everything that he does is for his players. And, you know, you've especially felt that during COVID. Um, that's when, you know, that light was kind of shined on him as to like, all right, like this dude really loves us. And like, yeah, he cares about winning, but at the end of the day, he's here to turn us into men and to have a better life once we leave college. And, you know, it just speaks volumes to, you know, who he is as a person. And then, also, I mean, his family, I mean, his wife is an amazing person and just, you know, everything they not only do for NC State football, but the community in Raleigh, um, for NC State, the school itself, um, just everything that they do for us and for them. I mean, they're just amazing people. And, you know, after games, when you see the way that he is just blazing with passion, whether it's whether it seems like he's coming at someone or he's not, that's just that's just who he is. He loves to win and he loves for his players to have respect. So. One of the uh, one of the all time TV moments, man, with the cigar, the solo cup, uh, yeah. it, it's it's incredible. I love that dude. I love that dude. Yeah, what, uh, you, for- what, what you see is what you get with him, you know. And yes. it's, it's some people might not like that, but I but I love someone that's very truthful, not going to beat around the bush. And if you know you're not doing the right things, he's going to let you know. And if you are doing the right things, he's going to praise you. So that's just that's just the person he is. That's the coach he is. And you know, wouldn't have wanted to play for anyone else. No doubt. No doubt. And that's why NC State produces the men that they do. And uh, I love that, man. This has been awesome. I'm grateful for your time. Excited for your future. Uh, Thanks for joining us, brother. Yeah, thanks for having me.
man, what what an intense conversation. I mean, that guy, he, he is truly amazing. And, and so is his head coach, Dave Dorn. I mean, just, just them two together, the energy, the passion, uh, the, the love for the game. I, I know I've said that in the intro, but it's just, it's so clear for that young man, how he plays, uh, puts his life on, or his life, his body, you know, on the line each and every play. Uh, he, he's one of those guys that, like, does not have regard for his own health to get the ball carry down, okay? His team is the only thing that matters to him, and stopping the other team across from him is his main objective. Some, some things that I absolutely love about Peyton Wilson is, number one, his athletic ability. I mean, the guy ran a 4-4, was the fastest linebacker at the combine, explosive, strong, side-to-side -side instincts, all there. You know, when, when you look at what he can do, and, and he has a knack for getting the football, too. Uh, you know, a pick six against Clemson, gets fumbles, creates fumbles, falls on him. He's just always seems to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, his, his, you know, football IQ is off the charts. You know, I know that as an offensive guy, we always like to pick and say, yeah, you know, linebackers are the quarterback of the defense. Well, you know, he, he makes quarterbacks look like the linebacker of the offense at times. That's how smart he is and, and the things that he is able to do when you, you know, just think of a cerebral player. And I, what I loved and what he just said right there is, man, he, he got a little taste this past season of what being a pro can be in regards to he graduated. He had a very light class load, some online classes, was really able, you know, to just focus on ball. And, you know, when that next step is taken, a lot, some guys can't make it, right? Some some guys can't handle that. Where When this is your job and this is what you do for a living, this is how you feed your family and, you know, all the different things because you have so much more free time. That's what I hear from everybody when they go to the next, you know, kind of level and come back maybe after their rookie years, all the time that they have, how are you using that? And I really think Peyton Wilson's going to be a guy that uses that to the absolute max. He's going to know what, what these other teams are doing. He's going to be prepared. And I think, quite frankly, hearing him say, man, I want to go somewhere where there is a vet that I can just lean into and soak up all that knowledge and learn and, and sit there. And listen, I'm not saying he, he's going to be sitting at any time because I think he can play right now, today, and help your team. Uh, it, it's funny. I went on a couple of different podcasts with the Commanders and, and one with the Seahawks, and the Seahawks love them. I mean, I, I think that, that they're at 16. That might be a little high. Maybe they try to trade back. But we're hearing some first-round buzz for Peyton Wilson. I, I certainly don't think he's still sitting there in the second round. So if you want him, you got to go get him. You know, you, you got to trade up and, and lock that guy in because, honestly, outside his health, which I know that's a concern, but – things that I've heard back is, is that the combine came pretty clean. Everybody's feeling good about his medicals, not a ton of different concern there. This dude can play for a really long time, you know, barring injury, which that's for everybody. I think he can really make an impact at the next level. And, you know, just the way that he plays the game is, is uh, it's fun and it's contagious. And I think that that's going to spread to to other people throughout the team. So guys, this was a lot of fun. This is our last week. We've got one more on Wednesday. Will Shipley's going to sit down with us. The Clemson tiger. Great. Uh, they're the versatile running back, and and he wraps it up. Uh, then we're gonna have some some strictly combine or excuse me NFL draft coverage for you guys next week. We're gonna have interviews with you know Jordan Reed, who I love, trying to reach out to Jim Nagy, get him on the podcast as well, just to hear about these guys and the things that they did. And who do you like? What do you not like? And they're gonna they're gonna peel it back. They're gonna be real with us. So appreciate you guys always tuning in. Appreciate all these great athletes who took the time and sat down with us and and had these great conversations and. So excited for them to take the next step and get to the next level and have those dreams kind of, you know, accomplished there and, and meet those dreams. So appreciate y'all as always. Continuous to love your support. Continuous to, you know, push you over to that, you know, YouTube channel there. Subscribe. Leave some comments. Always love reading those from you guys. And, of course, the OGs over on Apple Podcasts. If you could rate, review, subscribe there as well, we would greatly appreciate that. But until next time, we'll see y'all.